Namaskar and welcome to this exclusive conversation with Shri Bhandaru Dattatreya, Honorable Minister of Labor and Employment. Prime Minister Modi led NDA government completes its office, two years in office uh, this month. And today we are going to put in perspective the report card of the Labor Ministry, basically all that has been achieved in the last two years and the unfinished agenda as well. And particularly we're also going to talk about the issues that uh, are critical in this space. Uh, we're going to talk about the labor reforms, the EPF issue. We will also be touching upon the contractual labor workforce, their welfare and uh, of course trade unions and much more and to do so let's uh, get talking with honorable minister so thank you first of all very much for talking to dd news uh, when the modi government took over uh, uh, prime minister mentioned that uh, this particular ministry will go out of its way to take full care of the labors uh, the workers uh, rights and also their welfare and particularly the employability part of it so in the last two years how much of it has been covered how much of it has been covered in this particular domain welfare of the workforce and the generation of employability see first of all uh, this government is totally committed for the welfare of the workers that's why the first initiative that we have taken is minimum pension for the workers earlier it was only 30 rupees 90 rupees 230 rupees 300 rupees now this government led by honorable prime minister narendra modi ji we have make it a 1000 rupees as a minimum pension for every employee for which uh, perpetuity also we have made it every year the government is spending additionally 800 and 25 crores for this uh, welfare of the pension and regarding the second one the biggest achievement mm -hmm. after independence is bonus amendment in this bonus amendment act the earlier the calculation was only 3500 rupees okay. now we have enhanced it up to 7000 rupees so one is coverage coverage Earlier it was 10,000 rupees. Now we have increased it to 21,000 rupees. So this is more than double. First is pension, mm -hmm. second one is bonus, third one is which has very historical decision. Mm -hmm. Through executive decision we have taken that the minimum wages are very very important for the worker, those who are working in the particularly the contract workers. I was coming to that. Uh, the hike in the contractual workers uh, pay hike, you've taken it to 10,000 rupees. Are we going to expect more uh, initiatives on those lines in terms of empowering the contractual labor workforce? What all should that particular class expect from your ministry? See, even this 10,000 rupees also it may not be sufficient because they are more skilled workers. But now, national floor level, national minimum floor level is 160 rupees. So then, 160 rupees, that is also recommendatory one. It is not a statutory one. So in this perspective, when the Supreme Court, when the Supreme Court gave its judgment, and taking into consideration of a consumer price index, and also variation of dearness allowance and other some social benefits to the worker should be enhanced. Then keeping in all these parameters, then we have put up to 10,000 rupees as a minimum wage. Even the state governments, if they give higher, and the minimum wage will be 10,000 or whichever is higher. So are these factors, are you considering these factors in the new set of labor reforms that uh, you personally are looking into? Because in one of your earlier interviews, in fact, you mentioned that our labor reform initiatives need different thinking. So what has been so different and what is it going to be now? Labor reform. The first is, the first very difference is this, uh, uh, the sea change is the, particularly the migrant labor. 
migrant labor. Migrant labor. This government has started national Shrama Suvidha portal. It's called Shrama Suvidha portal. So this Shrama Suvidha portal, now we are going to provide under this Shrama Suvidha portal, the industry will be given LIN number. LIN LIN number. And the workers will be provided, employee will be provided by universal account number. Now, the employee can come all online returns. And for an employee, for an employee, this UAN number, which is a portable one, and even the migration with this number, portability, he can get wherever he is. Uh, pension or even uh, for his uh, what, what you call that uh, uh, EPFO mm -hmm. other thing can be get anywhere else mm -hmm. so according to that number mm -hmm. the LIN number we have provided 8 lakh 60 thousand establishments have come on the portal okay. and employee 6.23 crore employees we have given LIN number mm -hmm. and other important factor is this UAN, we have activated 2.3 crores mm. with uh, Aadhaar and bank account. Okay. And by end of this year, we are going to provide all these six crore workers mm. for the UAN, mm. so that the complications in the Provident Fund mm -hmm. or even other loss, Simplified. simplification, mm. we have made it through the technology. Now this is the first achievement mm -hmm. and uh, second achievement is the employment generation is the prime area where which we are going, Prime Minister flagship program that is Make in India Make program. In. in this Make in India, the major portion is Kill India, unless the workforce should be converted into the skill workforce, technical workforce, for which a separate ministry has been created. Now, in this country, every year, mm. one crore unemployed workforce is coming into the market. Mm. Workforce is coming into the market. And with the demographic dividend, mm -hmm. India is going to play a major role for this. We have started National Carrier Service Portal. That means all employment exchanges in this country. Mm -hmm. We are going to modernize. Okay. We wanted to make it as a carrier council centers. Mm -hmm. On one side, under this NCS portal, the all these employment exchanges. Mm -hmm. One side, the job seekers will be there. Mm -hmm. And job givers will be there. Mm -hmm. And on this portal, the counseling will be take place. and. Every employee who registered in the employment exchanges, mm -hmm. he can be provided the information of the job, mm -hmm. where, which date, and which company you have to get job. Mm -hmm. You can go and search for that. And for carpentry, drivers, or even mechanics, even nursing, even many of the tourism centers, like that, the counseling is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So for which we have started the first phase, okay. 100 model carrier council centers mm -hmm. for which 380 crores we are spending it. We'll slip into a very short break. When we'll come back, we'll talk about the reforms uh, that are lined up as far as the unorganized sector is concerned. And also, since employability is one of the cornerstones and the prime focuses of this particular ministry, we're talking about labor and employment, what all is lined up and how much of the space has been covered as far as employment generation is concerned. Stay tuned to DD News. Subha ka sahi agaz. Taza khabro ke saab. सुर्खियों के आईने से देश विदेश की सही तस्वीर और दिन के हर पहलू पर नजर नया सवेरा सोमवार से शुक्रवार सुबह सात बजे सिर्फ डीडी न्यूज पर
Welcome back. You're watching this conversation with the uh, Honorable Minister of Labor and Employment, Sri Bhandari <coughs> Dattatreya ji. Uh, now talking particularly about the retrenchment package as far as uh, contractual labor class is concerned, their welfare, especially health and financial. This has always been a very critical area where every time labor unions feel that not much or enough has been done. Is your ministry something different, something that has been actually done at the concrete level? And uh, in this uh, sector, our uh, more emphasis, is more development which we have achieved is in the employee state instance corporation. That is ESIC. In ESIC, we have started second generation of reforms. In this second generation of reforms, which the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister has inaugurated on 20, 20th July in 2015, in which now the entire all hospitals, all medical dispensaries in ESIC, online registration and availability of electronic records, all their availability of electronic records and uh, beneficiaries need not go to the ESI hospital. With this online electric uh, record, he can get his health records through SMS to his doorstep, mm. number one, for, this, for which uh, we have started Panchadeep scheme. Mm. With this Panchadeep scheme is a very, very, the largest uh, social security scheme in the entire Asia. Mm. And uh, we have spent uh, more than 2,000 crore rupees for this uh, IT enabled services so in health. Mm. And second is, we have another change is Swachh Bharat Abhiyan in all hospitals in which uh, all the patients, those who are on the beds, we change daily their bed sheets in a different form of colors. That is called whip groy. That means Monday, uh, whip groy. And uh, this is called uh, rainbow. Rainbow. Other new initiative is we started Ayush in all our dispensaries and hospitals. That is Ayurveda, Yunani, Yoga, and Homeopathy. All these Indian medicines we have started in all our hospitals. Other important uh, this thing is 27 into 4. That is medical helpline. All the doctors will be available at the hospital into 24 into 7. The special OPD services for senior citizens, okay. 3 to 5, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. So like that, see, we have made, and uh, this coverage also, mm -hmm. that ESAC coverage, we have included for the construction workers. Mm -hmm. All the construction workers will be given services in the ESAC hospital. Mm -hmm. And first time, the uh, rickshaw pullers and other rickshaw mm -hmm. in pilot basis Delhi and Hyderabad we have started this medical services to the auto rickshaw and rickshaw pullers mm -hmm. and our initiative is to be scheme workers mm -hmm. scheme workers means Anganwadi workers mm -hmm. Asha workers mm -hmm. and midday meal workers mm -hmm. since you mentioned Asha so uh humane laws uh, regarding the working condition and uh, when I speak about working condition uh, particularly as far as the women workforce is concerned sir women workforce so women workforce we have given dignity to the women workforce the main change which I have brought is the maternity benefit earlier the maternity benefit was given to the women workers the 12 weeks. Now we are going to enhance 26 weeks. And other is for all working conditions for their separate canteens and crechi for their children 
and other particular time of functioning, time of functioning, transportation, counseling, all these facilities have been increased in the women workforce. And other important uh, factor is we wanted to encourage more women workforce equally with the men without any gender based gender bias. We wanted to give equal opportunity to the women, even in the skill development. Even the skill development, our institutes are there. In our institutes, the 33 percent, you see, skill is given to the women. Okay. Uh, ease of doing business uh, is an important aspect, uh, sir, uh, in terms of the startups and how your ministry uh, is, is taking the whole startup initiative in a big way. How is your ministry pitching in startup and make in India? See, startup and make in India is a very innovative program. And the startups are particularly the weaker sections. SC, STs, SC, STs, those who are young entrepreneurs, they are providing the bank facilities, number one. Number two, the each bank, minimum two number new entrepreneurs should be increased. Like that, total in the country, two lakh fifty thousand entrepreneurs they are going to be given this opportunity and uh, every entrepreneur, every entrepreneur, I am telling about SCST. Other than this, other than this, lot of entrepreneurship to providing in younger generation, in different uh, fields of uh, business, the government is increasing and uh, for this even the woman folk also has given a very much increasing. So your ministry has uh, provided many labor law exemptions as far as starting of the startup initiatives are concerned to promote uh, the overall entrepreneurship ecosystem. Yeah, because it's a beginning one to give some uh, time for promotions. Time for promotions, there should not be more restrictions so that they come out with a higher speed to compete with others. So that's why we have given some of the exemptions for a time period, for a time period, so that they can compete with the others. Even for the startups, for the startups, see the Prime Minister has given for this unemployment uh, people, 1000 crore rupees have been provided for employment generation in this program. Uh, so, what are the specific uh, measures that your ministry is taking in terms of uh, uh, pitching in ease of doing business? Because you said earlier that your focus primarily is going to be employability, the generation of employment. So, in order to facilitate that, this ease of doing business and various initiatives which are practically implemented on ground. So, this is one of the major areas where we have to encourage the employer. because. Our main uh, this thing is a conducive atmosphere should be created among the employer and employee. So in this, the ease of doing business also we have encouraged it. In this ease of doing business, our uh, administrative charges we have reduced under the uh, for the establishments for EPFO and ESIC Act in 52. And uh, we have reduced it to 1.10 percent to 0.85 percent. This is going to benefit 850 crore rupees for the employers. And all these administrative charges, all these complications, it has been solved through the technology. Are the labor unions overall on board with you? Are they with you on same page as far as all the reforms that you have listed in various spaces like startups, make in India and uh, labor reforms, how much they are with you and how much do you think if at all is if at all there is any trust deficit between you and the labor unions, I mean the ministry and the labor unions that needs to be bridged. See, 
labor reforms are is a continuous process it is a continuous process but there are 44 labor laws are there these 44 labor laws they have been enacted some of them are 1925 Are you going to do away with some of them if you That's think they are right. redundant? So 1925. Now it is some 60 years or 70 years, 80 years or over. Now all these laws should be tuned to the update. Number one. For that, we want simplification, rationalization, and amalgamation. Through this, we wanted to make 44 labor laws into. four labor codes okay one is code on wages code on industry relation code on social security code on safety and working conditions mm. but no where mm. the workers rights will taken away mm. our paramount interest is to protect the interest of workers recognition of the trade unions is one of their main demands it has always been one of the main demands and one of the proposals by the ministry has been that you are not really going to allow outside entry into the trade union in arna sector the outside office bearers will not be allowed whereas in anarna sector the two outside office bearers can be taken into because we don't want any politicization the industry should not be politicized worker union will be there but the union will be within the own industry not by outsider and other way this is another reform is the registration of trade union so now let's also talk about the epf issue uh broadly speaking what were the reasons that led you to change your stance on the epf withdrawal finally more clarity on that and now are you happy with the decision that has been taken now by your ministry no really because the EP, under the epf act the employer contributes 12% and employee contributes 12% now the restriction has been made the in the agreement of trade unions it is the demand of the trade unions it is not the uh, ministry's demand and in which uh, employers contribution of 12% we have restricted only 3.67% of its contribution can be taken from epf for after retirement of 58 58 years of age and now this is the demand of the trade unions minutes are there that meeting took place when narendra tomar was minister and now when the workers wants when the workers want that see we don't want to wait for 58 years okay then we thought of okay if the workers demand is there workers interest they feel they feel that there and then only we wanted to take away our employ our employ provident fund then we have agreed that's why but it is in the interest of workers but and as far as the epf interest rates are concerned are you on the same page with the finance ministry as of now oh, we are on uh, the we are under discussions are going on because cbt has recommended cbt has recommended for 8.8% and ministry of finance advised us Go for eight point seven percent. We are examining our CPFC, our ministry. We are examining, and we are going to have, uh, have discussion, dialogue with the Ministry of Finance, and uh, let us see what uh, see yes. final conclusion will come. But everything will be towards the welfare of the workforce. Uh, so one final question, very briefly: any unfinished agenda as far as these two years are concerned? The yeah, unfinished agenda is uh, some of the uh, major one is the uh, Child Labour Amendment Act, which has to be passed in the uh, Rajya Sabha. It is pending, and uh, EPF Act, ESIC Act, and uh, other uh, this one is this labour course, even this maternity benefit, even minimum wage amendment act. 
So much of the acts are they are left over. But I, but I will hope so that in future they will understand that in spite of this all Allah Bala in the Parliament Raj Sabha, we have passed the Bonus Amendment Act. Bonus Amendment Act is the reality of the day finally. Uh, and what's your, in nutshell, your assessment of the work being done by your ministry in the last two years? Because it's about the report card of your ministry. What's your assessment? Very briefly. Well, very innovative methods we have taken up, number one. And uh, as I told you, the first time we are going to cover the Anarna sector, that is 40 crore workers are there, for their welfare, for their working conditions, for their wages and for their social security. Alright, on that note, thank you very much uh, Sri Bandaru Dattatriyaji for talking to Doordarshan News. There are a lot of initiatives and policy decisions lined up, but all that is always for the benefit and the welfare of the labor class, the workforce that we are talking about and the paradigm shift that the Honorable Minister has been talking about as far as the overall 360 degree view of the two years report card is concerned is specifically in the unorganized sector. Once again, thank you very much, sir. And uh, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. Meanwhile, news and updates continue on Doordarshan. Stay tuned with us. Namaskar.